I'm here with the Razer Kishi Ultra. It's a new controller designed for smartphones and even small tablets. It's really nice, but the question is, is it worth the Razer tax? Razer has released a few other controllers like this in the past, including the original Kishi and the Kishi V2. The difference is, is that those controllers were designed for maximum portability. So the grips of the controllers were a lot smaller, at least much smaller than you get with something like a Sony DualSense or an Xbox Series X controller. The Kishi Ultra though offers full size grips. This does increase the overall size of the controller though. And you can see it completely dwarfs the Switch with my Galaxy S23 Ultra inside. Thanks to the new design though, the Kishi Ultra can support pretty much any Android phone, even the biggest iPhones, and even small tablets, including the iPad mini. Kishi Ultra has a USB-C adapter built into it, and all you do is simply slide your device onto that adapter and then lock it in place with the other grip. When you snap your phone into the USB-C connector, it immediately starts powering the controller. There's no battery inside the controller, so it's going to be leaching power from whatever you connect into it, and of course, that's going to make your device's battery drain faster. But it does also power this pretty cool chroma RGB lighting, which looks pretty sick. Thankfully, the Kishi Ultra does have a USB-C pass-through port so you can plug in and charge while you're gaming. It also has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is a nice touch. Razer also offers free software called Razer Nexus. This is what you use to control everything about the controller, including the RGB lighting, remapping the buttons, calibrating dead zones, and you can even launch all of your games, record gameplay, and all sorts of other stuff. And remember, it is totally free. There's no subscription needed. So what's it like actually using the Kishi Ultra? Well, getting your phone into the controller is actually really easy. You just slide it onto the USB-C port and then snap it in place. Getting it out though is a little tricky. I found it easiest to turn the controller upside down and then bring the phone out of it using gravity. The beautiful part about it is, is that once you're connected, it just works. It didn't matter what I was playing, the controller picked it up no problem. That included playing Horizon Zero Dawn through Steam Link. It included playing some Fortnite and it also included playing some retro art games. Every single thing I threw at it, it immediately just worked exactly as I expected it to. Even if you're playing a game that doesn't allow for physical controller input, Razer's Nexus software can save you there. There's a virtual controller mode that it basically allows you to use the physical controllers to manipulate the virtual controls on the screen. But be careful, some games might consider this cheating. So you're gonna have to make sure you play by the rules if you play competitively in whatever game that is. As far as the overall feel is, it feels great. It doesn't feel quite as good as something like the Sony DualSense or the Xbox controller, but it felt awesome in my hands. It also had a great distribution of weight. I feel like if I held this controller for multiple hours of gaming, my wrist would get a little tired because you've got that big phone or even a small tablet inside it, but the controller itself still felt great. And I could see playing this for at least an hour without having any problems. The triggers and full size sticks also felt great. These felt just as good as any other pro level controller that I've used. Do be warned though, that the face buttons are very, very clicky. They're probably some of the loudest buttons that I've ever used on any controller. If you're using this controller next to somebody, make sure that that somebody has headphones on or else they're gonna get pretty annoyed very quickly. So the big question is, is the Razer Kishi Ultra worth buying? So the way I see it is, is that there are three problems with this controller. Number one is the price. This is a very expensive controller coming in at $149.99 here in the United States and 169 euros over in Europe. That is twice as much as you'd spend on a Sony DualSense controller, which is already one of the more expensive controllers on the market. This is especially frustrating when you realize that the Sony DualSense can do pretty much everything that this controller can do, except that it doesn't have that cool snapping effect. The Kishi Ultra also doesn't travel well, this is it. This is all you can do with it. You can make it bigger, but you can't, you know, take this thing out or make it smaller. Hopefully you have a big backpack because you're gonna have to fit this into it anytime you're not using it. Also, Razer did point out to us that you can use this as a wired controller on PC. You would just connect a USB-C cable into this port here and then connect that into your computer and then you could game on the couch. I can't imagine using this on my, my couch like this. This just 
I don't know, this just feels silly doing this. Ultimately, if you want a controller that's like the Kishi Ultra, that is with that backbone-like design, this is probably going to be the best bet. You're gonna spend a lot of money on it and you're not gonna get the travelability that you might get from something else, but as far as comfort and features go, this is now top of the line. The big question is, is whether or not you wanna spend $150 on this or spend half that much money on a Sony DualSense and get most of the same features. Not to mention, you can use the Sony DualSense on your Sony console, on your PC wirelessly, and it'll fit into your backpack a lot easier. Basically, the Razer Kishi Ultra fits into a very specific niche, and it's really, really good at that. But if you don't want that particular thing, there are a whole lot of other options out there that might do better for you. But I wanna know what you think. Jump down in the comments and let us know if you really want a Razer Kishi Ultra, and if you're willing to spend $150 on it. Let us know in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.